our lesson here on work. Um, so we're going to start to take a physics concept and really start adding in some calculus into it, um, which actually makes it more applicable um, in everyday life. So I'm um, so sorry that this printout didn't like print super dark. So um, just kind of bear with me here. If you have everything printed out, though, ahead of time, it should not be an issue. Um, so pretty much is what you learn back in physics is work is force times distance. Okay. So it's a big one. Work is force times distance. So let's do some problems where work is force times distance. So in the 1978 Olympics, uh, Sally Alexi, Alex Eve astounded the world by lifting a uh, record-breaking 562 pounds from the floor to above his head, which is two meters. Equally astounding was the feat of strongman Paul Anderson, who in 1957 braced himself on the floor <clears throat> and used his back to lift 6,270 pounds of lead and automobile parts a distance of one centimeter. Ooh, one centimeter. So which one was more work? Let's do the first one. So we'll do... Um, First one of uh, Sally here. Okay, so for his, <clears throat> what he did for his work, his force was 262 pounds. Okay, so to find force for that, we're going to convert this into, um, so I have the conversion, I don't have the conversion here. So I'm going to write it down right here. So one pound is equal to 4.45 newtons. So that's a conversion. So we want to find work in terms of newtons. We have pounds. So one pound is 4.45 newtons. Okay, so his force that he had here was his 562 pounds, but I want to make this into newtons, so times 4.45. And then he did that, and he moved it for two meters. So do that times two. So this is how much work he did. So I'll just tell you right now that this is, apparently it's 5,000 joules. That's what I have my key here. So that's 5,000 joules. All right. You know, this does not look like it's focused very well. Oh, that's much better. So sorry. Okay, and then <clears throat> the next one, Mr. Anderson here, his work was 6,270, convert this into Newtons, 4.45 times. Now, just take note that this one person, the top person, did two meters. This person did one centimeter. So what is that in terms of meters? Because I did this in terms of meters. Well, that's 0 0.01 meters. Okay. One centimeter is 0 0.01 meters, so that way we have the same units here. Um, and so what would this be then? This would be 279 joules. So who did more work? Lex Steve did more work. All right, so who did more work? That guy. All right, now let's start talking about um, some variable um, forces and work and fun like stuff like that. So um, realistically, and a lot of problems that we do, deal with springs um, especially, um, <clears throat> force is variable. So since force is variable, um, work is equal to the integral of force dx. So how does this work? Well, the distance is actually this integral right here, right, from one end to another. That's the distance. And then we have a variable force. So well, how do you explain a variable force? Well, it looks like this. Hooke's law. A variable force is going to be k times x, where um, a spring is pulled beyond its natural um, length. Okay, so let's take this problem right here. That a spring exerts a force of 5 newtons when stretched 1 meter beyond its natural length. So what we need to do here is we need to find what our f of x value is. Okay, so f of x... is equal to kx. So I need to solve for k. Once I solve for k, I have my f of x, and then I can go ahead and do my fun integral stuff. So for f of x here, well, I know that k is equal to, it was pulled 5 newtons 
over 1 meter. So what does k equal? It equals 5. Okay, because again, x is distance, so we can always rewrite this as k equals f of x over x, or in our case right here, just f over x. So what was the force? 5 newtons. So this function is 5x. So that being said, how much work is required to stretch the spring 1.8 meters beyond its natural length? So what I'm going to do here is we're going to integrate from its natural length, which is 0, which is natural beyond its length is 0, all the way to 1.8 beyond its natural length of 5x dx. And that's how much work happens here. So uh, real quick, we're going to get 5 halves x squared. So we're going to get 5 halves times 1.8 squared, which is equal to 8.1 newtons per meter, which is, by the way, joules. All right, so that's work to do with uh, spring. So a lot of problems we'll be doing here will be more like this, less like this. Okay. And let's go ahead and talk about another type of variable force that we're going to work with here. Which is work to pump for pumping liquid. So we have a figure below which shows a conical container with a radius of 10, height of 30. Suppose that the container is filled with water to a depth of 15 feet. How much work is required to pump all of the water through the hole to the top of the container here? Okay. So what we need to do here is we need to find our uh, function, all that fun stuff. All right, I'm trying to think which way I want to do this because there's two different ways you can do it. Um, <clears throat> all right. So, some things that we need here. I'm just trying to see what we need here. Stuff that we've done. Now. Okay, so first off, let's talk about weight density of water. You don't have that. I'm going to tell you what that is. That is 62. That's not a 62. 62.4. Okay, that's the weight density of water, and that will be pound per feet cubed. All right. That is the weight density of water. So how we're going to do this is we're going to see how much we need to pump up this liquid. So I'm going to start at the base as, as zero. We need to pump all the liquid. So how much liquid are we pumping? So we're starting at, at the bottom, which is zero, and I'm going to be pumping 15 feet of that liquid. Okay, so I'm integrating from that. So this is going to be that times our density. Let's try to see if there's a formula here, or if I just need to kind of write it out. Okay, so it's going to be that times... This is going to be our density times our height. How much are we pumping it? All right, times the area of what we're pumping here. So height times area gives you volume, by the way. And I'm going to do this dy. I can do it vertically. So um, here's our, and this draws a picture right here. So I'll kind of make it on a graph here. So we have a height of 30, so this is 30, right there's 10. So what I want to do here is <clears throat> I want to find out what this equation is. So then that can be my area, but again, it's going to be in terms of dy. So I'm going to solve for y, and then I'm actually going to flip it for x. So this would be y equals... Um, Rise over run, it's actually negative. So rise 30, so down 30 over 10. Oh, I can't write 10, can I? And then plus 30. So what is this? Y equals negative 3x plus 30. So let's solve for x here because it's in terms of dy. So y minus 30 is equal to negative 3x. Divide everything by 3. And I'm going to get x to equal negative 1 third 
y plus 10. Okay. So this is the height. Well, that's not the height. This is part of the um, area here. Okay. Not, not the whole area, but this is a cone. So how do you find the... If you take a slice of this, the area of this cone, it's actually going to be um, r pi squared, right? That's going to be the area of a slice. So in this case, our area for this slice, not r squared pi. I don't know why I wrote pi squared. Omit that. Um, so this is going to be a equals negative one third y plus ten. That's my radius squared times pi. Okay, so that's my area. I have that, and I have density. I'm missing just the height. So now my height. My height's going to be changing as I'm pumping this thing up. Okay, my height is actually going to be thirty minus y. Because at zero, I have to pump the bottom all the way up thirty. And then at like halfway 15, I have to pump the pump it even more so that my height is going to be however much I'm trying to pump it over minus y. So now I have everything. So I'm going to go from 0 to 15. My density, I said, is 62.4 times my height, which is 30 minus y. My area, I just found that right there, is going to be negative one third y plus 10 squared pi dy. So this is how you find work for this. So this actually right here is my entire function. Okay. So talk through this one more time. So 0 to 15 because that's this measures my depth of water. So I'm at 0 bottom up to 15. That's my water. That's my water that I'm pumping out. This is just the weight density of water. It's given to you. This is how much we're pumping it out. We, this thing has to go 30. right? So it's a variable as we go through. So I have to do 30 minus y. Because when it's at the bottom, I'm pumping 30. When it's at the top, I'm actually pumping 0. All right? And if it's halfway through, I'm pumping 15. If it only goes up 10 feet, I have 20 more to pump. That's why that's the height. And then this is my slice right here of uh, my area of my figure here. True, two dimension right here because it's area. Um, it's a circle and it's going to become a circle. So I take my slice is my radius of my circle. Circle is r squared times pi. And then so I get that right there. Here is my lovely little formula. And you literally just go right to your calculator and you're going to get an answer of. Right there. This is going to be in feet pounds. It's a unit that you probably have never heard of, but um, we don't. This is not in terms of meters, so since it's in terms of feet, it's just going to be pounds. You just kind of deal with it. So that is going to wrap it up. So we're going to have some problems on your daily work that really focus on oh, where to go. Focus on the spring stuff. So that one's a little bit easier to find f of x because you're given Hooke's law. Um, that one's not so bad. And then you'll have some problems that deal with this. Big thing is we'll give you the weight density. Um, of water, and then it's going to find whatever the height is. So, however tall the figure is, just going to be that minus y, and then the area, find the slice. This was a cone. So, take the radius um, r squared times pi. That's it. It's going to wrap it up.